Well, thank you. It's obviously intermission, so welcome to our intermission feature with the one and only Hila Flipman. So it's so great to have you with us. Um, but I'll mention that next on the program is the Symphony Number no. 5 of David Mazlaka. And like so many wind ensembles around the world, we're celebrating the life of David Mazlaka this year. We lost him recently, sadly, because he was such a contributor to the medium, but to the entire world of music. And the Symphony Number no. 5, I have to admit that somehow, and I don't know how I missed it, but I had never done it until this last year. And so this is the first performance that I've done of it here in Austin. And it is a stunningly wonderful piece. I don't know how I, I somehow missed that one. I've done number four and number two and number eight and you know, these other big pieces of his, but somehow had not done the symphony number five. But it's such a gripping piece. And I thought after his having passed away, the ending uh, of this piece is really quite touching because unlike the second symphony, unlike the fourth symphony, unlike the eighth symphony, it ends in a very soft sort of, there's this sense of resignation as it uh, the music filters out. But I think I could just let the music speak for itself. It's obviously a very big piece and it's a, always a big undertaking as Dr. Fennell used to say it's just a it's a big old tapeworm of a piece but this one is that but it's also has some very special heartfelt music in it and like so many of David's pieces he was absolutely incapable of writing an insincere note everything uh, he believed in strongly so we're obviously anxious for you to hear that but I now want to talk about what we've just heard, what we've just experienced. We're recording this on Thursday evening, the night before the performance, and we just finished a wonderful rehearsal with the extraordinary Hila Flipman uh, on these two pieces. So it's that was quite a rehearsal. It was. It was so great, and it's just. It's always. I look forward to every time we're able to work together, and as far as I'm concerned, we're not able to work together enough. But I love Hallelujah. it. <laughs> I love it every single time. Uh, I wish. What that, do you like better, rehearsals or concerts? You know, that's that is the question, isn't it? Because yeah. for me, yeah. maybe I'm not supposed to say this, but <laughs> I, I love them both. But I really love the rehearsals. Me too. You know, me that's too. to me that's just the best. Yeah. You know, if you really allow yourself to actually be there, right, with the music, you know, then it's this. There's this exploration that is very unique to, it is. to, to rehearsal time, isn't there? It is, and, and I also I think that, too, the rehearsals are not a time to save anything. <laughs> Where we're suddenly going to try harder at the concert or something. You know, it's like you give it your all uh, all the time, I think. Yeah. So I, I just love, and I love the atmosphere and being able to actually communicate and explore and try things. Which you do because every time you do it, it's different. You know, you're you're. I hope it's not a bad thing. That's not. That's a brilliant thing. I I mean that in the, in the best possible way. She changed that bar to five eight. No 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. As you know, <laughs> <laughs> the color is what I'm talking about. <laughs> so let's talk about you a little bit before we before we get into the you know the music, uh, the guts of the music here. But you were born in Israel. Yes, in Jerusalem. Right. And when did you come to the U.S.? I came here um, when I was 18, uh, straight so to, to study, Juilliard. So yeah, yeah. to study at Juilliard. Yeah. yeah, Nothing in between, so just boom. Oh, that, Well, that's not entirely true. Um, oh, that's I, right. I, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, you were from they, Austin. I keep forgetting. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is hometown, actually, in a big, big way. Uh, right. My dad is a professor of botany and came and did his sabbatical here, and I learned about Wonder Bread and peanut butter and Taco Bell, and I fell in love with this country. Right. I, I, I don't know. I Pardon me for forgetting that. Cause I it's okay. I forgot it, too. <laughs> right. But, yeah, you, you told me that you lived, uh, like, uh, near Lake Austin Drive or somewhere over well, there. My school was Doss Elementary. Yeah, Doss Elementary. Yeah. So, <laughs> whatever that area is, that's It still I'm exists. Going. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Well, welcome home. Welcome back. It's a good childhood, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you, so you were at Juilliard, 
And uh, interestingly enough, there's kind of this collision of ideas on this concert because John Mackey, yeah. whose music you performed so beautifully, you were in school at the same time right. as John. And did you know him during that time? Did you guys know each other? Yeah, there were all these, you know, the BCM guys right, right. kind of connected even back then. And, um, and I... I was a teaching assistant for ear training. Uh -huh. um, I was one of those singers. And as such, you have... Sometimes known as fear training. <laughs> but it's, it's <laughs> I, yes, it was a little scary, but it was wonderful. And I, I mm -hmm. was an assistant. I, it was um, my, my TA job. And right. um, you had to take the composer's uh, class with the main teacher, with, with Ms. Anthony Cox, mm -hmm. uh, because you were expected to kind of be at a higher level. And the composer's music also expected to be at a higher level. <laughs> uh, anyway, we were all in there together, Eric right. Whitaker and John Mackey and Steve, and we were all Jonathan, in this... Jonathan, right, everybody. In this, uh, and Jonathan Newman. Yeah, right. we were all shivering in our pants at these <laughs> ear training classes. Right. And so, so then, from that point... Uh, you've had this remarkably diverse career, yeah. you know, where you've done, you've been so successful, but doing so many different things, which is what I love about your voice, because it handles all of those things so beautifully and so expertly and with, with such elegance, you know, that's, and that's one of the things that then you bring to this piece because this piece yeah, it, it works in that way, right? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it really does. There's something about the way that he writes, um, that John Mackey writes, um, particularly in this piece that lends a kind of freedom in terms of how you approach it. There's a little bit even of jazziness at parts, musical theaterish approach in parts, of all from, but all tethered together in, in a kind of pure way. Right. And there's such a <clears throat> melodiousness, is that a word? Sure. Uh, to the whole piece that that comes through you not not because of needing to do it operatic or anything like that. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. It's just music. It's music. Uh, you know. It's just music. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's beautifully said. And we should mention obviously the powerful, beautiful text written by Abby Jacks. Yeah. You know, which is yeah. uh, really and, special. Yeah. That's so. This is the second time with you, and right. the second time that I'm I'm performing this uh, this piece in its entirety, and every time I go back first to the words right and they're just so transformative and heartbreaking right really yeah and and it's it's a perfect marriage of the of the music with those words it, it, they really the the music sh makes it shine the it it does and uh, you know it it is heartbreaking but the story is heartbreaking yeah. you know uh because it's it's more of the Odysseus story, you know, uh, the uh, from the Odyssey that m many of our audience know from Wine Dark Sea, John's voyage through that. But this is yet a further, ex you know, exploration of yeah. Odysseus and the Odyssey and the shipwreck and Calypso, yeah. you know, and that. When whole... we did it in Dallas, um, yeah. uh, one of the musicians came up to me and said that she had, previous to hearing that she had always hated Calypso. Because, you know, in the right. story, it's always these women that are taking him away from, um, right. and this put her in this very human light, and she suddenly didn't know how to feel because it was so, it was right. so human. Yeah, I think it's uh, difficult to view this in, uh, you know, and not feel terrible uh, heartache and heartbreak for Calypso, mm -hmm. you know. The fact that, uh, you know, as he goes sailing off and she does whatever she can to support him. So yeah. it's, it, it is, it's wrenching, but yet the text is, it's beautifully set to music. And interestingly, I think the choice of just the instrumentation is beautiful. Yes. There's a loneliness to the instrumentation and the beautiful, to, in my, the way that I hear, you know, we were talking about the, the the actual subject matter of the poetry, but of course it's also symbolic, mm. which makes it such good such good poetry in right. terms of just the human condition and and loneliness and um, 
and how do we how do we live with it um and and fragility I, right also the harp the piano exactly you know, there's yeah. there's a choice of things being very tenuous not not at all stable right uh, yeah and uh it it would have been you know, he could have used a larger instrumentation. He could, you know, but no, it's very compact. It's very, uh, but every Intimate. note is important, and and it makes the coloration, the colors in the piece, really beautiful. I think too. I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah, and and this is, you know, I know we're uh, it's, this is our mutual admiration society here, but you, <laughs> I, I talked about this in the rehearsal that you sing it so beautifully because of the color, sometimes without vibrato, sometimes with something, you know, and the ease with which you let the power of the text come through with the color, I think is really extraordinary. You're helping me quite a bit along, so thank you. Okay. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's really beautiful. Um, then there is this whole, uh, you know, the uh, not published in the program, uh, was the fact that we did this encore of Good Night Moon, which I know was written for you, and which I've told you this, and I, you know, in the rehearsal, this I couldn't help myself this evening because I'm right now we read that story to our five year old granddaughter, you know, and we'll read it to our now almost six year, six month old uh, second granddaughter, you know, so. Incredible. Yeah, but and that story is just so beautiful in the illustrations and all of that. So, I. So it actually it was written for me to sing but it was written for my son right and just as much as you you're reading yeah there's something about it that i think you can sense the gift in it in the way that it was written right um that it's written out from the from the heart um and there's an element to it and i think that's what you are are saying when whenever you talk about the story there's something deeper about the book, like many good children's books, right. <laughs> that really speaks of, of bigger hu human subjects. Right. And this one is all about saying goodbye. Right. And uh, it's so simply said, and for a kid, it's really just about saying goodnight to things. <laughs> right, but and a an picture adult, and a cat. It and, takes a and... whole, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, it's true, and that's, it's... In a way, that's all great poetry, right? You know, because you, if you want to explore something, a really large subject, sometimes you use really simple materials. Uh, and this, I think, does it beautifully. And I think it's beautifully sad. And, of course, you, you sing it so beautifully. Um, let me just ask, what's, what's next for you? <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> oh, kind of wacky. Um... I mean, a lot of work still doing a lot of contemporary things. There's this beautiful, uh, a couple of new premieres that I'm preparing uh, coming up in the spring. One is uh, Michael Doherty right. for the band world, mm -hmm. and I'm really and he just sent me the poetry today, and I'm just I'm so looking forward to it. And then uh, Jeff Beal, who's this sure. incredible composer, mm -hmm. he's writing a um, a piece for St. Louis. Uh, with Leonard Slatkin and he also he found these kind of journals of his I think great grandmother and she was writing about her life but there's something again so intimate and universal at the same time mm -hmm. um, some of the things that he's sent me so far I, I can't wait to do those right. um, and there's there's more in that world in in other news, I've been writing uh, just a ton of my own songs. And if you don't and do it, you should follow Hila Pittman <laughs> on Instagram, yes. uh, and you Thank can you. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm getting ready actually to record an album, and um, and just on the road to to putting all that together. And I've been performing more and more of them live, right? And doing kind of sometimes in just cabaret style settings and sometimes in a more show put together you know lights and and elements of, right. of that kind of thing and i'm loving it i'm absolutely loving it that's that's wonderful um you and i have had the good fortune to work together several times but not enough i will say um but we did um the premiere of the wind version of mr tambourine man a we number did. of years ago uh, I was so scared of you back then. Oh, come on. 
<laughs> I, I, was, I just wanted to make sure I got all the rest. You, you, you did beautifully. <laughs> but, you know, and, and I hope that we can do that piece again and that yes. we can revisit it. But uh, there's so much great material and your voice is so extraordinary. I wish everyone in our audience could have been at the rehearsal t tonight, Thursday, but also at the master class that you did for our voice students, uh, which was just this fantastic emotional journey <laughs> for everyone who was there. It was it was so beautiful. So it's it's really a thrill to have you with us, and I know our audiences love hearing you. And uh, tomorrow we have a rehearsal, a dress rehearsal, but uh, of course now people who are watching this have just heard the products of that. So. I cannot thank you enough, sweetie, for being Love here. You. It's thank great. You Love so you too. Much. Thank you.